Morgan Rogers McMillan. Thanks uh, very much for that lovely introduction. My name is Morgan McMillan, and, uh, and this is where I work. I work at the Community Foundation serving Boulder County. And as Pavel mentioned, I work um, partly with startups along the Front Range uh, who are interested in giving back to their communities. And then I also do research and advocacy uh, on behalf of our community. And I publish a report called Boulder County Trends. And I brought some, and I will leave them in the back um, if you're interested in taking one when you leave to learn more about the community. But this is what I'm going to be talking about today. Um, so the Community Foundation is part of um, a network. Community Foundations exist actually all over the world, and we all are hyper-local. So we focus on our communities and what we can do locally. So we do grants, uh, we try to encourage local philanthropy, and then we also lead local initiatives. Uh, this foundation started in 1991, and since we started, we've given out over $50 million in grants. Uh, most of that has stayed right here in Boulder County. Uh, and today, that's what I'm going to tell you a little bit about, is our community. So uh, for starters, I think I can say this about the community in which we're all living. We're awesome, right? And it's not just me who thinks this about Boulder County. We actually hear this from a lot of national publications uh, who have said some of these things about us, all right? So they've called us the smartest, the healthiest, the happiest, the foodiest, the fittest. Uh, I left off of there that we recently were recognized as the worst dressed because I didn't really feel like that fit into the, the overall theme. Um, and I also left off CU's recent recognition among the top party schools, although we're, of course, very proud of our local institution. Uh, but no, seriously, you, know, you can see that Boulder County is often recognized um, really as a leader in the nation and in the world for a lot of these things. Uh, and you can add to that the fact that our unemployment rate continues to be significantly lower than the states and the rest of the countries. Um, our median household income is about 30% higher than the national one. Uh, so, you know, we're looking pretty good and we can feel pretty good about this community in which we're living and working and going to school. I'm not going to tell you a couple of things that aren't making the headlines. We have the same poverty rate as the nation. This is also true, along with being the healthiest, fittest, foodiest community. Um, so one out of every seven of us in this community today lives below the federal poverty level. So uh, that's about $23,000 a year for a family of four. So if you can imagine living in this community on that income, and if you're a student, you probably can't imagine that. Um, but if you had a few children that you were trying to support, it becomes much more challenging. Um, so we have seen, um, much like the rest of the country, our middle class shrink over the last 10 years. And in fact, if you look at who is, um, what portion of our community is growing most rapidly, it's young children in poverty. Okay, so this is something we're paying a lot of attention to at the Community Foundation. This is also true, and this is um, something we're not very proud of. Uh, we have two excellent school districts in this community, St. Brain and Boulder Valley, and both do uh, really tremendous work with our middle and upper income students, which we mostly have. Um, but as I just mentioned, we have this growing number of poor kids who live in our community and are going to school here. And if you look at um, the numbers about how we're educating those kids in particular, we're not, uh, we're not holding the bar very high. And in fact, we're being outpaced and outperformed by our Colorado statewide peers um, who are doing actually better at educating poor kids in Colorado. So uh, this is also something we want to pay attention to. Here's something that might be obvious to folks in the room, right? Uh, we are often considered a very white community. I'm here to actually say that's not true. Uh, one out of every five of us today identifies as a person of color in Boulder County. Uh, it's one out of every four kids in Boulder County are Latino today. Uh, one out of every three Colorado kids is Latino. So, you know, again, along with those national trends that you may be hearing about, um, we are also diversifying as a community and as a state. Um, and yet that diversity is not reflected in our current leadership. So, and that's true across sectors. Um, we have 93 elected officials in Boulder County today, and only two are people of color. Um, that's actually doubled in the last two years, too. Um, we used to have one. So we're moving in the right direction, but I would argue not quite as quickly as we should. Um, you know, likewise, and it's not just the public sector, if you look at nonprofit leadership, uh, it is not reflective of uh, the ch our changing demographics, nor, I would say, is our business leadership. So um, also something that we're not particularly proud of and um, are not being called out for, um, but I think we should be. And finally, um, this is also true. Our giving rates are lower. So we are a very wealthy community. I mentioned in the beginning our uh, median household income, about 30% higher than the rest of the countries. 
We are among the top 15 for our per capita personal income. Uh, we have a lot of money, we don't like parting with it. Okay, so if you look at our giving rates as a percentage of income, it's uh, lower than Colorado as a state and lower than the nation's. Um, so we're actually quite generous with our volunteer time, um, but I would argue that we have uh, more resources than maybe we're currently offering, um, not just to nonprofits locally, but beyond the borders of this community. Okay, so why should you care? Um, it, you know, I'm guessing that most of us in the room are, are probably doing all right and we're on the better side of those headlines. Uh, and, and in fact, you could probably continue to live a pretty happy existence right here in this community, and I hope that we all do. Uh, but I'm here to tell you a little bit about why we should care. Um, not only because it makes us a little uncomfortable to think about our growing uh, inequities, but also there's a reason why we should care. And, and that's this. Um, I think if we continue to move in the direction that we are moving, Boulder County will um, lose its competitive edge. So um, if you think about who we might consider to be community competitors, places like Portland, Austin, the Research Triangle area of North Carolina, um, all attractive places to uh, the highly educated workforce that we have uh, historically counted on recruiting to be in our workforce. So most of us who live in this community today were not born here, we did not grow up here, and we were not educated here. Uh, and so we have been very good at attracting an educated workforce, um, an entrepreneurial workforce, to come and start their businesses and employ people here. Uh, and all the same time, we have not been equally investing in our own education system. Um, so Colorado is very far behind most of the U.S. in terms of our investments in education. And, uh, and as I mentioned, we're not doing a great job educating our own um, growing number of poor kids right here in this community. Uh, and so I think it's time to start paying attention. And if that was not enough to compel you to think along with me that we should be doing something about this, I think there's also an economic reason. So uh, the Gallup research folks did uh, a study over a number of years that said that community attachment is directly correlated to your local GDP. Uh, and they found three key drivers for community attachment. Aesthetics, social offerings, and openness. Now, you can probably guess where we excel, right? We uh, have put a number of resources, or a tremendous amount of resources, into our local open space, into parks. Um, we uh, are a very good-looking community in many ways. Uh, and we also have a lot to offer in terms of social experiences, so bars, restaurants, social activities. Maybe you can guess where we're dropping the ball a little bit, because I haven't mentioned it yet, and it's openness. Uh, so we actually score low uh, on national surveys in terms of our perceived openness as a community. And if you dig a little bit deeper and break that into uh, segments of the community, we score particularly low in terms of our perception of openness to immigrants and minorities. And that's not just immigrants and minorities who have responded that way, it's across all survey respondents who feel like this is not as open and welcoming place um, to immigrants and minorities as, um, as it is to other groups of folks like um, uh, families with young children, the LGBT community, and so forth. Uh, so I mentioned earlier in the presentation, right, that one out of every five of us today identifies as a person of color already. Uh, and so I would argue this is not just an ethical issue, which I think it is, it's also an economic one. As I mentioned, um, that one out of every five uh, of us is growing rapidly. Um, so Colorado is predicted to be a majority minority state for kids by 2021, um, just around the corner. And as we know, this is part of a larger uh, U.S. trend and something that I think our community uh, really should have been paying attention to for the last 10 years as our demographics have been shifting rapidly. But today is a good day to start. Um, so how do we build a better Boulder County? Here's some of my short list of recommendations, and I hope you'll join me in these. Um, we start by getting better at educating low-income kids. Uh, and the earlier we start, the better. Uh, so we need to double down on our investments in preschool and kindergarten, which the Community Foundation has been um, leading uh, and working with our two local school districts on doing, and, and along with the community. So those of you who vote and pay taxes in Boulder County, thanks for your support. Um, but I think there's more that we can all be doing in terms of um, either volunteering in schools or mentoring young people in this community. There's definitely a high demand um, and lower resources for that. Uh, or just thinking about other ways that you could get involved with local organizations working with at-risk youth. 
Uh, here's something else. We need to really do a better job at building a pipeline of diverse leaders um, so that we can affect that leadership um, trend that I talked about. And again, that's across sectors. Um, so thinking about how we're recruiting, how are we outreaching and recruiting new leaders, um, how are we mentoring new leaders, and, um, and you know, if you're like me and you're a uh, white person, there's lots of ways that we can also do, uh, be supportive in recruiting and mentoring on, um, you know, encouraging uh, emerging leaders of color to get involved in leadership positions here in Boulder County. And, uh, and finally, this is something we can all do, I think, uh, work on, be open. And, and, you know, this is an opportunity, I think, for us to reflect on our own networks, our personal networks, um, our professional networks. Who are we seeing at the table and who are we not seeing? And what can we do um, personally to really uh, bring that up to people's attention and also outreach? Uh, and it's not just about inviting people um, to what you're doing, but really thinking about um, how do you join in on what others are doing, um, what they're really already interested in, and how do you support some of that. Um, so here is my short list of recommendations about what we can do, and I think if we um, all worked a little bit on this, we could make this community even more awesome than it already is. So thank you very much.